Let's talk about KXM. Amazing band. Awesome. You got three combinations of Lynch Mob with King's X and Korn. Put it all together, you get KXM, and it is amazing. Powerful stuff. You have a third album that you're getting ready to put out. You started recording in February, and now you're getting ready to... It's done. It's done. It's done. Any updates on that? Any news? Uh, well, um, we're just trying to finish the mix, and we're... Uh, I've got a record coming out called The End Machine, which is... Um, Next year. Right, that's coming out first, so I have to wait for that to come out. So that's the that's been my my challenge with doing all these records is that I, you know there's not enough time to put all this stuff out, so I have to wait. So then I have to put the brakes on and stop recording. And and true, and this is a big album too. People are talking about this a lot because it's almost like a dare I say it, docking reunion in a sense, minus Dawn, and you're you know getting in um, the original drummer. You got Mick Brown, you right. got Jeff Pilson, you got Robert Mason. Warrant Days, and from Lynch Mob, and everyone's really looking forward to this album. And what I heard and gathered from Blabbermouth is something that is different than what you guys usually sound like, something very unique. Is that right? A little fresh. Yeah, I'm telling you, I, I don't really know how to label it. It's really hard to describe music, you know, verbally. Um, I, I would say that because we're you know, a little bit older, we, we were definitely going back more to our roots what we listened to when we were kids so there's a lot of that you know stuff that we listened to in the 70s and maybe you know, late 60s so the Crosby, Stills, and Nash and Zeppelin and Cleveland Mac and influences like that and you know, Hendrix and, you know everything that was going on back then you know all the art rock music Your tone. That's all, yeah, I, know. That's all I know. That's all that matters. The riffs, the riffs, dude. Yeah, the riffs are there. The riffs are uh, a big part of this, you know? On Guitar Hero, you gotta have the riffs, too. You got the riffs, dude. Riffs. I know. Yeah, you just, well, and I grew up the era of riffs. I mean, Tony Iommi is a riff master. Shit. And, Brian May? You gotta yeah. learn about Brian well, May. Well, everybody, <laughs> yep. you know, everybody is. Just, killer, killer riffs, dude. Uh, Leslie West, and, you know, you name it. I mean, it was just. That's, that's exciting. Stuff. I was really fortunate to be uh, growing up at that time as a guitar player. Talk to young kids, and I'm like, "What did they get to grow up with?" And thinking, "You, well, <laughs> yeah, true. unfortunately, yeah, they're getting it kind of secondhand." It's you, because, Randy, Eddie, that's well, you could still on. listen to all that music, but it was it was another thing to to be there when it was emerging. Yeah, well, I don't understand anything like that. I was like, well, "Who's this band, Led Zeppelin?" What? Oh, dude, you got to come over to my, my house and, oh, and, and put on this record on the turntable, mm -hmm. and let's listen to this first song on the Led Zeppelin One album, mm -hmm. and then go out in the garage and practice and try to beat it. You don't have to now. worry about Led Zeppelin now. We got Greta Van Fleet. <laughs> no, but the Led Zeppelin is trying to copy them. <laughs> They're trying to copy Led Zeppelin. <laughs> Greta Van Fleet. Oh, I thought Zeppelin was copying Greta no, Van Fleet. No, but listen, it's okay. <laughs> these old guys from England. Yes. They're trying to copy these young No, kids. it's okay because Greta Van Fleet was not inspired by Led Zeppelin. For the record, uh, they were inspired Aerosmith, by Aerosmith. Aerosmith, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Remember Lenny Wolf? <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. There's a little bit of that going. Okay, on. Okay, yeah. So it was yeah. great. Was that was a great band too? Right. They were great. I never thought. I mean, listen. I don't care. I mean, I rip off everything too. I mean, we all do. And like, who cares? It's just own up to it. I think is all you gotta <laughs> do. We all kind of mm -hmm. own up. Yeah. yeah. I like them too. Great music. Great band. Things like kick-ass music. But if you deny that you were inspired by Led Zeppelin, I, I come on. You have a problem with that. No problem with that too. I, mean, I steal way more shit than Greta Van Fleet's ever stolen. <laughs> I'll see you in court. But, you know, good luck. You know, I got really good lawyers. Uh, so, Dewey Cheatham and Hal. You heard of them? Uh, that's Hasbro. Yeah. Yeah. Dewey Cheatham. <laughs> Dewey Cheatham. That's from the Three Stooges. I like that. I like that. I like that. It's back in my era. That's his face. Now, you got you have a movie coming out. It's November been out. 29th, though, I heard. Oh, it's, it's been out? out? Well, it's, it's gonna, that's its television premiere. Television premiere. Yeah. Shadow Nation. And that's going to be on a network known as. I don't know. Tells me <laughs> no, you're telling me. I'm either. learning this as we speak. Sometimes I get it wrong. <laughs> I know it's not on DVD yeah. and st or streaming, but I didn't. I think it was FXN, something like that, or FNX. Um, so you guys stream it 
Yeah. yeah you, it's you, not HBO. <laughs> it's not HBO. You actually put it out. It's like 12. I don't know the station. You gotta find out the station of these things. I'm sorry, dude. But yeah, it's coming out 29th to, to, on TV, but it's a project you've been working on. You put an album out on it too, right? Yeah. I saw a music video. I think we posted it a couple weeks ago. You guys really dug it. Check that out. Great stuff. Um, and I'm just gonna go into some, some basic stuff with you, dude. And you posted something about something I didn't think you'd ever get into, which was positive grade. Bias. Mm -hmm. And you posted a picture. Question I wanna know, and probably all you guys wanna know, can we expect to see a George Lynch file uploaded to the bias cloud so we can get your tone? Well, uh, first of all, I gotta I gotta admit, I, I, I struggle with the news uh, stuff. You know, the Axe effects, and the Kemper, and, and the bias. I, I struggle with this stuff because I'm honestly I'm not good at it. You know, because I'm you know I'm, a, I'm an old tube amp guy. You know, and I'm just like that's what I love, and I, I don't understand it. It's hard for me younger cats like some of the guys that engineer for me or younger guys and their guitar players dude they you know that's how I rely on them you know so I really need an engineer to help me uh, sort of negotiate my way around all these sorts of devices you know, uh, modelers and so forth but um, I do use them but I don't I haven't been able to use them for my primary sound very often um, because I end up just going you know back to you know, what works for me, which is my tube amps, with some exceptions. So for instance, uh, on the record that you're referring to for the uh, soundtrack for the Shadow Nation movie, which is, which is the band is called Shadow Train, on that record I did a solo on a song called Trail of Tears uh, using the Axe Effects too. And we were going for a Gilmore, very processed chorus, you know, a lot of delay, a lot of reverb sound, and uh, the Axe Effects has wonderful effects. And very spatial, and it, you know, it, it captured it. I think did a really good job. That's I was good. gonna say on the bias head, I use it. Uh, I tuck it in with the rhythms uh, for a lot of my more recent projects since I've gotten ahead, and it does a thing that the other amps don't do, and it complements. And that's what I use it for. So, so having a, so having you know, putting my name on a, you know, a file. I don't know really be appropriate because people might be expecting to get that whole sound when really that whole sound is a product of a number of things. Right. Or at least a couple or a few things, you know, which mean maybe a tube amp, maybe two tube amps, and the bias head. But this could be a track, a track, um, like a single track tone. Mm -hmm. Maybe for one song you can label that, yeah. it'll work. Yeah. But I'm still that's, working, I'm still yeah. working with it. That's good to see you operate with stuff like that, you know? I'd um, like to see an effects suite with it. That's one thing I'm missing on. Really? Now you know what the guy wants. There it is. Uh, <laughs> going right we'll in. We'll get right to that, Mr. Lynch. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, we actually had a video from some guys you may know in Steel Panther. They released a pedal satchel they called the Pussy oh, yeah, Melter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You saw the Pussy Melter challenge. I, I saw the. the <laughs> you saw ad, the challenge. Uh, and, they, and they wanted me to respond. Or, or yeah, they throw it try out it to out. a lot of people. I'm not sure what that means. What, what's, what's the point of that? Well, what am I to do? you are Mr. Scary. You are George Lynch. You are a guitar icon. They want to see what you can do with the Pussy Melter. I actually, when I interviewed them, I asked yeah, them. What is it? It's a, it's a crazy. It, they define it as a wall of Marshall Stacks saturated to max 80s hair metal distortion in your face. And it actually sounds really good. A lot of guys are starting to buy and play it. They sold out, but I'm sure they can get you one. It's pink. It's got crazy tones like, uh, what's the tones we got? The, the knobs are called. So it's like maybe a Boss DS1 or is it? Uh, more heavier than that. Yeah. Yeah, it's got nice like a metal tones. zone or something. Yeah, yeah it's got, what's it's got it It's got moist and It's got moist, moist and function. And it's got uh, <laughs> soaked, soaked. Soaked, you know. <laughs> There's a lot of good ones on know, there. Little switch, little toggles on there you can get different sounds yes, out of. Yes, I mean, he plays and when you guitar. really want to get crazy, it's got the VABF, which is the vaginal <laughs> blood fart There you go. There we go. Yeah, because um, we posted a video with the, with the guys, and of course, Satchel, the first name he named was you. Yep. Who, who would like to see play this pedal and tear it up? And he's like, Lynch, Mr. Lynch. Lynch. all day. All day long. And, you know, right. do that, so. well, I don't know how to do that. Where, yeah. where do I get one? He'll yeah. send you one. Yeah. Satchel, Mike Star, Steel Panther, yeah. you guys. Yeah. He yeah. said yeah. that you'd be up for the challenge. Maybe a, a clip cranking it in your studio yeah. when you get a chance yeah. that work. Yeah. Yeah. There you there go. You go. Why not? I mean, like there you said, is, said you're the man. Yeah, you know, guys. big fan of yours. He was really very good. Now, what was I get to keep the pedal? <laughs> At least, right? Yeah. yeah, of course. They'll have to sign up for you too. Good. <laughs> um, question for you: What's one guitar 
you wish you never sold? One, the biggest one. Well, and actually, I haven't really sold guitars. I've had them stolen. And so, um, the one that I wish I really still had was my first really good guitar. It was a 60 or 61 Les Paul Special, two P90s. So, you're talking about that. Yeah. You're saying you know, your dad and you split the money to buy it, right? You saved right. up, your dad matched right. it, you bought the guitar? Right. My long boy yeah. money. It, was, it ended up being $80. And it came with a Fender Blackface piggyback uh, Tremolux. Wow. 210s. Two, two and both of them 80 bucks. So I put in 40, which is everything I have in my savings account. It matched me 40, 40. So my widow had it, and um, it was her husband who passed away. I heard it, it was the same. It was great. Um, and I just never bought one after that. I don't know why. I, I should. Because it's like my right pick one up, but it's a good one. It feels like I'm going home. And so you would never guess those guitars, Gibson, vintage Gibsons, would be like muscle cars. They would just skyrocket in value. No one would ever guess. You get them for next to nothing back in the day, you know? Well, I spent, well, I figure I, I spent probably 40 or $50 on mine. Right. And now they're about 10 grand. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which isn't even that much compared to a lot of other vintage guitars. I, I have a Kramer Nice one that somehow in the past year they just skyrocketed from 1000 to five grand to six grand. The one that they made Campbell with the lightning bolts on it from back oh. in the day. You played a Kramer. Well, I thought you I did. did. I did, I did, yeah. Is that a real Kramer or did you slap a Kramer logo no, on no, it? No, no, I had a Kramer. Yeah? yeah. Kramer was the thing that I used to play Kramer. Beretta. Um, I didn't really like it. No. Oh. Look good, though. The thing is, when you're just starting out, when somebody gives you something for free, you're so excited. It's like, wow, I got an endorsement, you know? So my first endorsement was Area Pro 2. Ah, uh, but Inkbase was Area Pro. Was it? Yeah. Like he denies it probably. Inkbase complained. Anything so <laughs> First act, you heard it. Um, and one thing I ask you, last thing, we ask everybody this: How does George Lynch define the term shred? Well, when I think of shred, I think of the new breed of guys that are almost like posting day, um, um, getting into animals of leaders world, you know, um, toasting world, and uh, and and I and I think you're seeing uh, people s sort of get past that world now and where where a lot of the younger guys um, are really getting into deep uh, like historically significant music uh, like this, uh, Mateo or uh, uh, you know just a lot of cast blues guys and guys are getting into bebop and gypsy jazz and stuff that's just holy shit you know they got all the all the big people chords figured out. Yes, the chord structure that they're basing solos off of are incredible. Right? Yes, it was a monster with that. So the, the days of us just kind of, you know, pantatonicing over one key, you know, statically is kind of like, oh, okay, how many more times can we do that and get people excited? You know? Right, you gotta bring something that's important. Yeah. Unless you impart an incredible amount of emotion and a unique attack and style and sound to it. There's that, you know. Right. So it's, if you have your own voice, I mean, then you, that trumps everything. Exactly, and it holds up, you're good. But you can't just, I think, decide to do that. That has to live inside of you. Right, right. and sometimes you may not even notice it, but other people around you will notice what it is. Yeah. Like, oh, shit, this guy's got that thing, that yeah. sound, that keep tone. Keep going like that and keep doing the little things you do. It's such a part of you. Yeah. One of those guys, I'll tell you what, for me, would be Vito Brada. You don't see that. Dude, solos were just like... Mystical floating solos, yeah, just everything yeah, yeah. just gelled. Where's you know? he now? Okay, I could be wrong on this. From what I understand, Vito runs a pizza parlor in Staten Island. I, I heard believe. it was a donut shop. But really? I think you're right. I think it was a pizza shop. Yeah. I, mean, I would buy pizzas there all the time. I see, yeah, I can see. But I'll tell you one donuts. thing. I heard from his neighbor. He would do donuts. He hates donuts. He loves donuts. He does? He does oh, now? maybe he hates them. I can't remember. He hates donuts now. <laughs> yeah. That's what he told Don. He doesn't like donuts. No donuts. He even lives down there, by the way. So further away south from us. That's right. He's around here, right? Yeah, Miami Beach. Beach. We're in Newbay country. That's right. Go drive up his Ferrari. That's right. I'll tell you something. Yeah, we're trying to get him. Then we'll get him on the show one day, hopefully. We need to do that. Um, I tried. <laughs> question. Last question. Cut off. Thank you for your time. And now, will you be a winner now? Should give you a more exciting answer. I, I met you there last year. I like an institution there. I yeah. think if you, you just awesome. stand in one place long enough, I'll eventually be there. Mm -hmm. You got Morley, so, I think, last year, right? Yeah, I, I'm 
trying to cut down my booths because it gets silly. Because it's like, okay, I'm playing nine booths. It's like, why well, I just play one booth and then everybody will line up and watch me, and that would be that's what most like smart people do. Right. But I'm an idiot, you know. I can't say no. Just, uh, just, like, it's a party every day there, man. Can you come by my pick booth and perform? I'm like, oh, okay. I'll give you a free pick. Okay. And a pussy melter. <laughs> and a pussy melter. <laughs> to oh, go. Pussy, yeah. To go. Oh, I have to go to the pussy melter booth. Oh. I had to actually demo your bitty dragon two wall oh, with okay. your crazy man line for Morley. I promise I'll get it to guys. I'm so sorry, but it's a swamp, but it's a great pedal. That wow wall function right. is insane, right. man. It's like, whoa, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> I forget you, about it sometimes. I busted it out. I used it on uh, a record I just did, and it's very prominent on the record. I'm like, this thing is bad as I used the, the wow. Accidentally used the wow setting on it. Right? It just went really extreme. Yeah. Dude, it was wild. Wow, wow, wow. Great yeah. stuff, man. But uh, okay. All right. I got to tell you, man, where can fans go follow you? Instagram. Yeah. Well, we're rebuilding the website right now. We've done next week, uh, so it's just uh, I got a, I got a few Instagram accounts. So I've got uh, KXM, Mr. Scary Guitars, and George Lynch Official. Uh, I pretty much live on Instagram, and then I feed that feeds Facebook and everything else. Really? Yeah. I see you respond a lot. You know what? Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to be a little Very thirteen year old girl or anything. I'm just trying to like. I think it's really interesting, and it's my one way of trying to stay connected, where I yeah. feel I can actually reach out and communicate with people directly on a daily, almost daily basis, not every day, but you know, try, cool. to, try to try to. I gotta ask you for a favor. Can you follow Masters of Shred? Just show me how to do it. Dude, <laughs> dude, 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 I'm 64, but you help, gotta, help an you old gotta, man out. Man. Old man of technology, out, come on. <laughs> you gotta go, go on here. Instagram. I don't yeah. know. You gotta go to Masters of Shred. Masters of We're gonna get this done live. It's just happening right now, live. It's happening live. Masters. There it is. Second Masters one. of Shred. Masters of Rock. 76,000. There we Masters are. Masters of Rock, dude. Follow that. Boom. I follow it. I press the button on George's phone yeah, to follow Masters of Shred. Okay, yeah. You're up there. I, I, I put a video with you. I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to so. something today. That's great. You're good. Old dog, new tricks. See that? There we awesome. go. Awesome. Thank you, man. Again, thank you, George Lintz, the mighty George Lintz. Legend. The mighty George Lintz. Okay. I'm changing my name officially. <laughs> okay. <laughs> another <laughs> another site coming soon. Check this out. Official Just name change. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out his new website coming soon. Check out. Look for the new KXM album, and of course the um, the end machine. The end machine. Because you know what throws me off the semicolon. How do you Just pronounce it? Just call it the end. The end. I call it the end. The end. The end. Machine. Okay. Machine. That's okay. what I mean. Machine part is so we don't get sued. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in. Take care.